Hi everyone, my name is Tal Klein from Resilium. Um, you may notice there's a bit of a discrepancy between the picture um, in the slide and what uh, you're currently seeing in your video, and that's because I'm growing my COVID beard out. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm here to talk to you about uh, desired state enforcement. Um, and the basic idea here is that the, the future of application control and security has to come first from shifting trust from people to code, and second, to ensuring that whatever is running in production is in a healthy or desired state, hence desired state enforcement. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this Lego airplane as an analog for a mission critical service or application. As you can see, it's a great application. It's a not only a propeller plane, but as you'll soon see, it could also be a jet or a helicopter, thanks to the miracle of Legos. It's a, it's a wonderful app, uh, very versatile. Anyway, uh, in general, uh, I think Legos are really a great way to think about modern CI/CD pipelines. So here's our repo. And like an assembly line in a factory, our repo feeds a CI/CD pipeline that produces services and apps from raw materials. It's important to establish the groundwork our amazing DevOps team has done to get us to this point by vetting and validating that the components of our CI/CD pipeline are up to date reliable and reasonably secure. The key is that the, the components of our airplane application must come from this superset of components. Now, because everyone might have a different idea of what an airplane app is or how to build it, and we may have multiple developers in various locations working on the airplane application, we need to architect a cookbook of recipes that define what our airplane looks like, what it can do, and just as important, what it can't do what pieces we'll need in order to put it together. We package it up with the understanding that the underlying components are dynamic, meaning we can't have absolute control over the nature of the Lego pieces that make up our airplane because we don't make them in-house. Uh, our container may come with capabilities for uh, building a helicopter or a jet, even though we may not need those uh, components. Um, in, uh, in pragmatic terms, we may not need to, for example, build our own Java compiler. Uh, but we can build a spec for what is acceptable. And that's where Chef and Spec comes in. It gives us a mechanism to continuously test that the parts of our airplane are in spec. They are compliant with our specifications and any regulations we may have uh, to be required to audit. And Spec lets us continuously test for security with defined corporate and regulatory policies. Uh, we can prioritize issues that may be problematic and uh, remediate them quickly. For Chef and Spec users, uh, verifying the security of every service component during uh, integration and delivery has become a best practice. A uh, common use case is uh, preventing a workload from bootstrapping if it uses vulnerable components or if it isn't appropriately hardened against CIS benchmarks. Say. The idea is uh, this all happens automatically. Developers don't need to do anything in order to audit their code or uh, validate compliance. So what we're getting at here is that security needs to be seamless and transparent to developers. They write code in their favorite IDE, they check it in and they push it live. And that's been our guiding principle here at Resilient uh, and working with Chef, putting developers first. We need to make sure we integrate security into the developer's world, not the other way around. We're not gonna ask the developers to go to some security console or write a manifest of all the applications that are supposed to be on some server or container. Uh, they want to write code and they wanna do it quickly and they wanna get it into production and we want the same thing. So what we've done at Resilient is take advantage of the declarative nature of modern development languages and modern frameworks and architectures. We analyze the CI/CD pipeline and take all of that declarative intent or desired state and use it to build a dynamic uh, policy, a dynamic whitelist. We automatically generate a profile of what should be running. Why? Because we know this. It's actually being done by the developers as they're putting together the application. So we can take this declarative intent from all these sources and we can use that to then populate and build that allow list, that whitelist, uh, that policy that we enforce at runtime. I wanna make sure, sure that uh, we're clear here. Uh, with Chef and Resilient, 
uh, you can ensure that what's running in production is what should be running according to spec. And if someone takes advantage or of a vulnerability or something, we basically treat it as a failed health check. They might try to elevate their privilege or cause harm or whatever, but they won't be successful. Uh, they won't persist because the infrastructure uh, will heal the application. It will enf enforce the developer's intent. It'll enforce the desired state. And bring the app back to uh, last known good or healthy state. By the way, the same applies to uh, rogue or uh, cowboy admins. You know, uh, you know these folks. They they mean well, but they uh, they make changes in production, causing drift and possibly increasing the attack surface, um, and sometimes resulting in disaster. So, uh, with resilient HF, we can ensure that our application is resilient not only to breaches but also to unsanctioned change. Ultimately, the desired state of any application or service is healthy. And that's all the time I have today, but if you have any questions, uh, I'm easy to find. And uh, please, uh, let's connect and talk more about desired state enforcement. Thanks again, and uh, have a great day.